Welcome to another episode of DM TV. This is the Faces of DM25 episode, a series exploring the people making up our movement, where we discuss their inspirational stories, why and how they took the step from citizen to activism and politics. I'm Johannes Fehr. I'm coordinating volunteers for DM25, and I'm speaking to you here from Berlin. And I'm really excited to be here tonight with Julie, Robert, Maria, and George. I think they're coming into the screen now. There they are. This is the core team that you're now seeing behind the scenes doing English subtitles for the videos on this channel. So probably now you will do, do subtitles that this team has actually done and has done for so many videos on this channel, which is a very um, tedious and important work um, because, for example, subtitles provide clarity of technical language, jargons and full names, enhancing language skills, widen reach, um, make it available for uh, anyone and anywhere, um, allow manageable viewing and sound sensitive environments, better user engagement and experience, boost search engine ranking, all these things. I've done a little bit of research um, and I think the success of this um, channel, which has now around 100,000 subscribers is also partly, yeah, the success of the volunteers behind the scenes actually helping out with providing these subtitles that uh, making it easy for everyone uh, actually watching um, to engage with the different videos. But before we go into this, um, a little bit of, um, yeah, talking about the experience of doing subtitling, um, let's see who these people are who are with me tonight. Um, and I would, uh, yeah, go once around the virtual room and um, find out a little bit who um, and where um, you are, uh, what is your background and um, what's your motivation? Why did you join DM25? So it would be great if you could just um, give a little bit of an introduction of, um, yeah, where and uh, how you are also uh, tonight uh, when yeah joining on this call. Um, yeah, very excited to start with Julie, who I think is in Turkey, right? <laughs> yeah, I live in Turkey now. I'm from the U.S. and um, I live in a little village here since COVID, and so, um, and I'm certainly not used to public speaking like this. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, so I wrote notes. <laughs> but uh, my background, I guess, uh, most of my work life is in tech. I'm in. Uh, I'm retired now, and um, uh I've traveled a lot. I've lived in Algeria and here in Greece a little bit and around the U.S. and a lot of places. And and um, and why I'm here is, I guess, um, because I believe in the things that Deem has to offer. You know, the ideas are amazing. And so I found a place where I could, as an introvert, sort of plug in and, and participate and do something. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> Great. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Um, and yeah, thanks for taking that step forward. I know that it is, uh, it can be, you know, um, very weird to actually see yourself on, on screen. And uh, now, um, the next person is, I believe in the Czech Republic, um, and it's called Robert or Robbie. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I think, uh, people have been calling me Robbie, all of my friends for basically my whole life and including the closest friends. So I have, uh, I just, it's stuck. So anyway, um, yes, I'm, I'm speaking to everyone from the, from the border, uh, of the Czech Republic and Poland in a town called Chesky Kishin, um, that I've lived in for a year and a half. And, um, previously before that, I, I had lived in, um, uh, Prague for seven years uh, or thereabouts. And um, uh, yeah, I moved uh, in 2012, November 2012, from the United States. I'm, I'm an American, uh, and I've uh, been living here in, in the Czech Republic since. Um, so um, my background, a uh, little bit about me, um, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I only lived in the United States. I had never traveled abroad or had been abroad uh, before moving to Europe. And, uh, or had, hadn't spoken any languages or learned any languages or anything like that. So th this was for me or, and really almost no one in my, uh, 
I don't know, so around me had either. So it was really a, a big thing for me to move. Uh, and uh, at home, uh, I, I studied, I, I, I studied literature for four years. And, um, and I had, I worked many different jobs and, and, and um, uh, mostly in restaurants and this kind of thing. And uh, I guess if I, if I, when I was looking at your question, Johannes, about uh, in preparing a little bit about what my background is, I guess that most people at home in Cincinnati know me as a, as a musician. Uh, and because I was playing and I play, been played in many, many bands and uh, drums and guitar and uh, punk and metal and hardcore bands, basically. So um, I think most of the friends I know know me that way. They don't know me as uh, a leftist in Europe, uh, <laughs> part of a political organization called DM25. So it's uh, so I think it's uh, for me this part of the coming on to here tonight would be uh, in some sense a lot of people don't know what I'm doing and don't see what I'm doing at home. So uh, that's the nice thing for me too. So yeah, um, I'm a school teacher here. I've been teaching uh, English and I do translations also, um, and I um, of Czech and Czech and Polish or rather Czech, and uh, that's how I got into DM actually or. Um, that's how I started to do this translation work was because of uh, my interest in the languages and I thought I would be useful in that way. And then I ended up basically starting to work with the subtitles. So it was, uh, I wasn't expecting that exactly, um, but that's the work I find myself doing and it's fine with me. Uh, yeah, and I think that's all I can think of about my background without getting too sentimental or <laughs> nostalgic. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I. I didn't know about the music. Maybe I have to look up your name uh, and <laughs> search for it. I think <laughs> you know, I'm not the, I, I know that there's also a resident metal head in Eric uh, also in the coordinating collective. So I always see Eric and think, you know, a, a metal, metal brother. So, <laughs> so I'm one of <laughs> the other one, I guess. All right. Very good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you came to Europe and became a leftist <laughs> or you probably always were. Uh, another leftist uh, in Europe, uh, I, I think, or I guess, um, let me know if that uh, is not what you call yourself, is sitting in the Netherlands, Maria. Um, how did you come to the M25? I uh, grew up in a family with, um, there was no politics, not ever discussed the politics at national or international. Um, but uh, I, we were raised with a great awareness of uh, our surroundings and uh, meaning nature, culture, but especially the fellow humans. Um, I studied nursing and uh, did the ICU uh, training afterwards and uh, actually traveled uh, in that capacity quite a bit. Um, I treated, helped treat the poor and the rich. I worked in Africa, um, in Zaire, uh, now it's Congo, Kinshasa, I think it's called. And I saw the devastation of the colonial regime there, of the, po the post-colonial from Belgium. And uh, I worked on cruise ships, working from Piraeus in Greece. And uh, with the rich uh, get together and have their joyous par uh, trips. But in the end, you know, everybody, uh, they all have the same anxieties. They all have the same fears of pain and illness. And so in that sense, we're all equal. Um, after I settled with the, my family in Greece and, um, the 2008 crisis really woke me up to, I stumbled all the blog of Janis Varoufakis thoughts for the post 2008 world. I don't know if you know this. It's a very, um, and, um, I followed and, and tried to find answers in what the F is happening, uh, in Europe and especially devastation it caused in Greece. Um, then it would developed into DM. I followed that became a member and wanted to help, but I'm not a street activist. You don't see me ever with a sign on the streets. I don't. And not into that. So just behind the scenes helping, and I like dealing with language. So I joined the Dutch translator board, later became coordinator, but there's not so much work there. And then we have this global translation calls where all the translators meet online. And I heard uh, Robbie's call for help. 
So I decided I could do some work there too. And I'm still there learning to transcribe in subtitle, I mean, instead of translate, which is a different job altogether. But uh, yeah, we're a great team. I like doing the work and it's a joy being part of them. That's it for me. Thanks. Thanks for the uh, introduction. And yeah, uh, you can already see, I think, a lot of travelers here in this virtual rooms. And of course, also just a small part of the bigger team, uh, as Maria has already mentioned, there's uh, many more people working on different languages as well. But yeah, tonight we have the team that uh, has been doing most of the, the English subs uh, for, for DM25. Um, yeah, I think uh, Maria was also speaking a little bit uh, about uh, Greece already and her experiences there. And we have someone here that is not quite from, from Greece, but uh, uh, in Cyprus, um, and that is George. Please introduce yourself as well. I'm, as uh, Johannes said, I'm, I'm uh, located in Cyprus, actually in Limassol, in Cyprus. Um, I repatriated here after having lived, lived uh, worked abroad uh, for practically all my adult life. Um, in fact, as a child, I, I, my parents emigrated to the UK, um, where um, basically all my, all my education went on, uh, I graduated from there, got married, um, and then got itchy feet. And since, since I traveled, I think going on about two or three continents of, uh, back, some of my childhood years I spent in Australia, uh, up to the age of 18. Um, my family then started to up and come back to, uh, to Europe, uh, back to London, London, in fact. In the UK, uh, where I lived and worked for a number of years. I worked as an engineer in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and, uh, since then I've also worked in Africa, um, but West Africa and Central Africa, um, um, again, in, in the capacity of an engineer and in, in sort of, um, uh, uh, factory management, um. And then come full circle and I wound up back here, um, bang off about 20 years ago. Um, I, I am in fact a Greek speaking, uh, Christian Cypriot. Um, I'm not saying, um, I use that, that description rather than say I'm a Greek Cypriot because I think, um, I don't want to emphasize the Hellenistic part because that, in fact, that's, um, I think a toxic element in, in our problem for those, those of you listening may not be aware Cyprus is, is a divided island. The North is occupied, uh, by the Turkish army. Um, uh, and although we, you know, at the Greeks, the Greek speaking part, we weep because we're, we, we are victims. In fact, our Turkish Cypriot compatriots are even more victims because over the years, um, uh, there's been settlers moved from uh, the mainland uh, uh, to the north of Cyprus, and uh, unfortunately, our compatriots are now a minority in their own country. Sorry to get political there. I wasn't political until I came to Cyprus, actually. Um, although I've always been left leaning. Again, that was the influence of my parents, particularly my mother. Um, in her youth, she actually worked, she was um, a, a member or loosely associated with the, with the communist party on the cultural side, she was a, she was a, a drama. She did various, various, uh, events. Um, but, um, actually she, she had to give that up. She was, she was from poor working class background as was my father. And obviously they, they immigrated to the UK for a better future for themselves and their children. So, uh, um, that worked out pretty well, I think, um, now. My motivation for joining DM, I've been a member since 2017 and, and, um, part of the, the translation and, and the, uh, subtitle subscription group. Um, I, I started a few, a few years uh, after that, a couple of years, I think. Um, but what would draw me to DM in the first place, I think, um, uh, was some of Yanis's, uh, uh, appearances where we found very inspirational. Um, 
And also the thing which re resonated particularly about Diem is, is, is the, the aspirational elements of, for equality and inclusivity, which I think is very relevant in, in the context of my, of my country. Um, and, um, I, by joining Diem, it was my way in fact of, um, getting educated, uh, to try and you know, contribute in some way here. Um, I have made contact, there are, I, I believe it or not, other, um, members of DM and I recently tried to, uh, was successful in making contact and, uh, uh, hopefully we will, you know, be able to talk specifics, uh, and, um, I'll keep you updated on that. Um, but for the moment, I'm, I'm happy to be a, a foot soldier as part of the, the translation and the transcription team and do my bit. Um, well, that's me. Thanks, George. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I, yeah, I also learned something here about, uh, a lot of different experiences and jobs that you have done. Um, and, uh, yeah. I think, uh, values also that you bring, um, to the team of BM 25, um, very inspiring. I also, um, we learned something about the Cypriotic history now, uh, that's also, uh, very interesting. Um, since Julie, you have, um, spoken very shortly in the beginning and you're in Turkey, which is, um, as, uh, we all say in, in DM, I think, um, not also a part of Europe. Um, so we have activists um, active DMRs, uh, in Turkey as well. Um, and Julie, I wanted to ask you a little bit on how, how is it, uh, in today's Turkey, because, uh, how is the situation maybe to, um, yeah, tell our listeners a little bit. Oh, the situation. Well, the economy is terrible. The, the currency is falling terribly and people are paying so much more, I don't know, 36% more since December in the grocery store and petrol and everything. And, uh, you know, the electricity bill was doubled, but now they've backed off. I read today, you know, from that, because there was so much protest. It's, it's hard for the people here really hard. And, um, and I think people here, many people really want change and they hope for it and they're looking for a way. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd say like that without going too far, because really, um, I'm not Turkish, you know, and I'm aware that an American coming in and saying some big opinions about things, uh, it's just unpleasant. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That speaks for you, <laughs> but thanks. Um, I think it's very important sometimes to pronounce this and also say to all uh, listeners, maybe from Turkey. You know, DM25 is active in the country and, um, yes. we especially, of course, are very happy if, um, yeah, we get new Turkish comrades joining the movement and, um, working for the change that you have been describing. Um, now we got a little bit political, but I think that is probably quite, uh, normal on the DM TV episode. Um, let's go a little bit into the work that some of you have already been trying to describe a little bit. Um, but I think it has also personally for me, I've through DM 25, uh, sometimes I'm doing now subtitles or translation, which is of course for us as a European movement. Um, yeah, we have so many different languages. Uh, we are speaking English uh, tonight, but, uh, all other languages are also important. So we're trying to do as many translation work as we can and, um, do that mostly on a volunteer basis. So, uh, we, every help is always, of course, also welcome. So if you are there, want to join volunteer at dm 25org um, you can join this team and be part of the global, uh, translation call and get to know all these people better also. Um, let's go a little bit into the, to the work, um, how, what has been challenging and or exciting when doing subtitling, um, and why do you think it is important? Um, Robbie, I think we can, uh, circle back to you. Thanks, Johannes. Um, well, why is it important? I think it's, um, maybe I'll speak for everyone here, but 
uh, obviously, um, it's important that in, in the sense that we needed translations or with the hopes that um, the English, you know, if we have a working knowledge of English, uh, that uh, we can for, we can translate that later and try to get as much reach as possible instead of having subtitles, but rather translations of the text and then subtitles in respective languages would be ideal. Um, of course, because of r reality, this is not possible. Uh, it takes so much time. Um, but I think the the overall, let's say, importance of this is is that, in my opinion, or how I perceived it at the beginning, was that we were, um, you know, uh, this idea of having as much reach as possible for 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 DM twenty five. That said, uh, with subtitling, um, you know, the work, uh, like you mentioned at the very beginning in the, in the intro today, uh, all the aspects, it's also of watchability or, or also even reach for some videos, as far as I understand, that when videos have subtitles, they even are, um, I don't know how to say this, but they're um, in YouTube even, you know, they're more available and they have more views and this and that. Um, so uh, there's that. But for me, I can say, you know, the Per speaking personally, um, the importance of the subtitling or uh, it's really that it's the thing I can do for Diem <laughs> that needs to happen, um, you know, that has to happen. I, I and I uh, am able to do it simply. I can find time and sit down and do it and do this. You know, I coordinate the board, as you've mentioned, um, or hasn't been mentioned, but I part of this coordination effort. And basically, the four of us are sharing that duty, especially with Julie. Um, but, um, you know, uh, this is something that I like, maybe like Julie said, that I was able to do it so simply I do it and it's important work for me because like Maria, I I'm also not the person who who is involved in this um, political life as much um, in the Czech Republic or even in America, not at all. Um, and uh, this is so for me, the importance of it is is quite, quite personal <laughs> that I can simply, it's something I can do for the movement. Uh, but of course, uh, the idea that, I think is that we have as much uh, we have some basis that we can basically translate from uh, and that's why the importance of the English board I think um, uh, is uh, is um, it's I mean it's it's very important this English board because it has this basis for the rest of this translations if they you know, they make that possible so speaking I mean from for, for me uh, uh, it's personal because it's the thing I can do but but yeah Thanks. I think uh, for all the listeners, uh, the board is basically the team. So the English team, uh, uh, you know, working on, on the different um, tasks uh, that are, of course, numerous. So we have a, a kind of a table, a board where we, you know, where everyone can pick what they can actually contribute in the time, time that they have uh, available on this voluntary basis. Um, Maria, what what did you um, learn by doing these subtitles or by doing this kind of? Thing? I learned everything, Johannes. I knew nothing about subtitling because on the Dutch board, the Dutch uh, translations, there was hardly any subtitling done. So from and I sort of avoided it because it seemed difficult. But once you know you get put a little effort in it and you read what it's about and you try and make mistakes and i mean these guys around me help me all the time to get better and uh now and and it's like it enjoy doing it it's fun also to to be able to get something done you know makes you feel proud as well that you did it again and um i think what Robbie said it's true. It's uh, it's so important that the message gets out there and that's understood by as many people as possible. So, yeah, it's important work because English is the main the main, however we make of it, uh, the main language. And uh, yeah, it's important that it gets done. Yes, um, and I think uh, in DF25, we are, of course, also doing a big effort to having more content now in, in different languages that is, you know, originally done in Greek, in German, in other languages. Um, but, of course, for the international um, scale, so to say, the English still will be uh, our most important 
language that we can also learn to speak to each other. Um, great. George, uh, is there something that you can share that, uh, what you have learned by doing this tedious work of, um, writing down what other people are saying, basically? Yeah, as you said, it is tedious work, mind numbing at times. Um, but, uh, okay. I'm, you know, okay. Boring work is something I I'm used to. Um, but I think when I got, got out of it, I could probably put into three separate headings. The, there's the intellectual stroke educational aspects of it. Um, because, um, in doing the subtitles, uh, I'm actually seeing m many more videos than I would normally, and maybe even see some, which I would, uh, particularly, uh, choose to, to, to see. Uh, but even then I find that there's a lot of interesting stuff, particularly the, um, 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 allusion to sort of the political implications of a lot of cultural stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to realize that culture is political, uh, or can be political. Um, the other aspect basically is the social side in, 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 in um, uh, through, through the medium of these videos, you're seeing, uh, getting exposure to people from different backgrounds and different, um, uh, different objectives, um, and di different cultures, different countries. Um, and the other thing is the cultural, so that basically the social and the cultural sort of merge. Um, and, um, I think the, the main benefit to me, if you, you know, if you can call it a benefit is, is, uh, as, as, um, the other speakers have already mentioned is, 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 the, is the satisfaction of having, having contributed something. Yeah. Um, it may it seem it's like a back room. It's a back room activity. You know, we're not there, uh, you know, carrying placards and so on, but I think, um, I feel that what we do it contributes to, to the efforts of, of the movement you know, to, for enlightenment. You know, I think it was, as somebody once said, you know, the, the, the three most important things about, about, um, and movement is communication, communication, communication. So that's where we are, I think. Yes. Uh, that's what we're doing now, communicating. Um, and something that I can share, what I've also found an interesting experience when subtitling, um, videos and especially then doing translation of subtitles is that I actually, uh, go much deeper into, you know, what the text is actually speaking about and learning what the speakers are saying, because I'm, you know, I'm writing it down basically again, um, which was also a technique that uh, helped me in school and so on to just, you know, once more, uh, go through it. So this is also something, if you see an interesting video, that is much easier, of course, uh, to subtitle. And of course, most of the DNTV episodes are very interesting and, um, fun to subtitle. Um, Julie, what, is there something that, uh, was special that you learned while, uh, doing this? Well, um, everything's pretty much been covered, but I guess I'd say I kind of enjoy it because there's kind of a relaxation that happens when you focus down on something for that long, you know, and I've learned a lot and, and seen people that I would never have known about before and ideas I didn't know about before. So, so it's, I love it. And, and also, uh, there's an emo when you're going that slow and going over, you know, what they're, what they're saying you get the emotional content that's going on in there too. And that's always interesting to me. Um, yeah. Yes. And the, the different kind of characters that you can also see in, in. Yeah. Yeah. They're fascinating. <laughs> and a lot of people I've respected for a long time and, and it's like an honor in a way. It seems silly, but I feel honored, you know, to be a part of something that, that they're that they're, um, in front of. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I think this has been a half an hour uh, episode of DMTV. Um, so that, uh, we will make it a little shorter tonight so that we don't have that much work for this one to subtitle. <laughs> 
Um, but maybe once more, one more time to, to Robbie to, um, yeah, wrap up the call and, uh, or the, the, the live stream or the stream that we have been doing. So, uh, Robbie, over to you. Thanks, Johannes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been given to me to, um, end it. So, um, I, a lot of the things that you've heard tonight, um, uh, I can say that, are uh, this is a way to get involved in the movement that is uh, possible, doable at any, um, you know, any contribution can, can help anytime you can put into it can help. Um, you know, Julie and I are native, we're, you know, na are native speakers of English or Americans. Uh, George has a background in, uh, in, in the UK, as you've heard, but, um, this doesn't require, uh, you know, you to be a native speaker of English. So one of the aspects, uh, about joining our team could be that, uh, you could, practice simply practice english or some exposure to listening and 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 so on um and transcribing can be in some sense um practice you know um but anyway i, I wanted to say that it's not a, a special inclusive team uh that you have to learn a lot of things to get involved in um there are some things at the beginning but once you get a uh, the hang of it it's uh it's 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 an easy it's easy work it's can be tedious but it's easy work um and uh, yeah, so uh, as you've heard, it, we're the, there's many of us in the in the in the on the team, but um, we're always looking for uh, you know more, uh, and we really need some people who would be able to um, uh, take over some of this work from us because uh, one of the things is is that the four of us here are uh, <laughs> pretty worked and pretty overworked sometimes with this. So. Um, uh, not to sound pathetic but um so please out there if you're uh, uh watching um if you could uh consider joining our team uh and uh helping us out with these videos um in my opinion dmtv or speaking personally dmtv is what i think um both maybe the most powerful tool or one of the most powerful tools uh for people to learn about dm uh to see the people involved in it um, all the way from people like us in the background, all the way to the the sort of uh, most famous people in, you know, that are part of it, or the most influential ones. Um, so uh, uh, this, um, uh, you know, this is a this is a good way to get involved. Uh, I think so. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if if you're sitting and you want to get involved somehow with DM25, you don't know how to do it, and you understand English, uh, you can work with it, and you have a computer. Uh, Get, get in touch, please. We, we, we need the help. Great. Um, yeah, I think this, uh, is of course also true for other languages. Um, and if you want to get involved, volunteer at dm25.org, that's where you can contact me and I will con connect you to, with all these uh, people that you have seen today on this faces of dm25, um, episode, uh, four faces of dm. It uh, was a great pleasure. Um. Also, you out there, if you want to join dm25.org slash join, um, if you're not yet a member, um, that would also um, always help us to, you know, to uh, grow. And um, thanks to you all for joining uh, this call. I think it was great fun uh, and uh, hope to speak to you soon again. Carpe diem. <laughs>